Praise Church, happy Resurrection Sunday. You guys feeling okay this morning? Anybody enjoying the rain? You better enjoy the weather. I'm telling you right now, enjoy that 60. It's not going to be another, our weather's not going to be starting with the 6 for a long time. I was telling the first service, this is actually the first uh, Resurrection Easter Sunday that I remember it be raining like in my whole life. So that's a lot of years. So, um, just right to where you're at. We're gonna uh, we're gonna start with a word of prayer. It is awesome. It's an exciting time. It's a celebratory day today. We're res we're celebrating the resurrection of our Jesus Christ, Lord and Savior. Amen? Amen. By Him being able to be resurrected from the dead, that means that we're able to be resurrected spiritually from the dead. Amen. Right? So let's pray. Father, we just come before you, Lord, just thanking you for who you are, Father, and what you've done, Father. Father, we thank you for the power demonstrated this weekend all those years ago, Father, from you coming, living as a man, doing your work, Father, and taking, uh, uh, dying a brutal death, Father, and taking our place, Father, in that. Thinking about us, Father, when we weren't even thought of yet. You were thinking of us, Father. All these years later, you, you took our place, Father. You took our beating. You took our, our punishment, Father, and we thankful. We are thankful for that this morning, Father. So this morning, all these years later, we come here and we celebrate your name and your actions, Father. We thank you and love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody says amen. amen. Cause I was buried in me, my shame. Who could carry that kind of weight? It was my dream. Still I met you. Cause I was breathing, but Alive. All my failures I try to hide. It was my dream till I met you. Let's sing it out. You called my name and I ran out of that grave. Out of the darkness into your glorious day, you called my name and I ran out that grave. Out of the darkness into your glorious day. Mercy has saved my soul. If the freedom is all I know, the only you, Jesus, the night with you, because you call my day. Sing it up. I walked out of that grave. Out of the darkness into your glorious day, you called my name and I went out that grave. Out of the darkness into your glorious day. Let's sing it out. I need the rest. Chains break at the weight of your glory. I need a shelter. I was a daughter. Now you call me a citizen of heaven. When I was broken, you were my healing. Your love is the end of I'm breathing. Have a future. My eyes are open. When you call me my day, sing it out. Out of the 
We thank him, amen. How do you think for this morning? Amen. 
Let's sing it out. Wandering into the night. What evil place to hide this weary soul? This vagabond. I tried with all my mind, but I just can't with the fine. I'm slowly drifting. Of Just when I ran out of road, I met a man I didn't know. And he told me that I was not alone. He picked me up, he turned me around, he placed my feet on solid ground. I can't be master, I can't be savior. Because you heal my heart, you change my name. But when we free, I'm not the same. I think the master, I think the savior, I think God. I cannot deny what I see. Got no choice but to believe my doubts are burning. Like ashes in the wind So, so long to my old friends Burning in bitterness You can't just keep it moving Sing it out! You're not welcome here From now till I walk the streets of gold I think of how you saved my soul This wayward son has found his way back Girl, I think the master, I think the savior Because you hear my heart, you shake my name For where the free, I'm not the same I think the master, I think the savior We're going to sing this next part here it says, hell lost another one He's talking about you we're talking about me, let's sing it. Hey, I'm not another one. I am free. I am free. I am free. Sing it out. Hey, I'm not another one. I am free. Cause I am free. I am free. Hey, I'm not another one. I am free. I am free. I am free. Hey, I'm Because you heal my heart, you shake my name. Forever free, I'm not the same. I thank the master, I thank the savior. Because you pick me up, you turn me around, you place my feet on solid ground. I thank the master, I thank the savior. Because you heal my heart, you shake my name. Forever I think the master, I think the savior, I think God. Turn to the person next to you. Tell them, get out. Just say it. Get up, get up, get up. Get up out of that grave. Tell them. Get up, get up, get up. Get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up. Get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. Raise your voices. Let me hear you. 
you who did you did you son you turned me around you placed my feet on the solid ground I think the master I think the savior because he healed my heart he changed my name to red for free I'm not the same I think the master I think the savior I think I don't think they heard you the first time. Tell your neighbor. Get up, get up, get up. Get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up. Get up out of that grave. Sing it out. Get up, get up, get up. Get up, get up, get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up. Get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up. Get up out of that grave. You guys ready to sing a hit pitch? Because you picked me up, he turned me around, he placed my feet on the solid ground. I thank the master, I thank the savior, because he healed my heart, he changed my name. Well, I'm not the same, I thank the master, I thank the savior, I thank Let's sing it out. He picked me up. He turned me around. He placed my feet on solid ground. I thank the master. I thank the savior. Because he healed my heart. He changed my name. Forever I'm free, I'm not the same. I thank the master. I thank the savior. I thank Father, we thank you for truly re being risen again, Father. Father, there's an empty grave. No other God can say that, Father. In any other religion, Father, all these false gods, we serve a living God. What more can I say to you? To make it all feel right, what more can I do to say? Put my trust in you today. You came into my heart so boldly I proclaim that you you truly are a He has risen. He has risen. The grave is empty. He came to take my place and conquer death. His chains were broken. Sins forgiven. He came to take my place and conquer death. Good reason makes you you carry all the pain a never ending love for me is 
more than words can say. For this I will say. With my hands lifted high, so boldly I proclaim that you truly are alive. Sing it out. You truly are alive. Cause he has risen, the grave is in. Take my place and conquer again. Cause change were broken, sins forgiven. You came to take my place and conquer again. Let's check it out. You have he's risen. He has risen. The grave is empty. Take my place and conquer death. Cause chains were broken, sins forgiven. You came to take my place and conquer
awesome day. What a happy day. Woo, glory to God, glory to God. We're going to go in and take communion. So anyone that did not pick one up, the ushers are going around. We want to make sure everybody gets one. Glory to God, glory to God. today because of the resurrection because he's not in the tomb anymore he is risen and everything he endured to get to the cross and on the cross and dying on that cross but on the third day on the third day on the third day God raised him from the dead. And because he is alive, we are alive. And through everything he did, by the stripes, we are healed. You are healed. Speak to your body. You are healed. As you partake of it, you are healed. So go ahead, partake of the bread. Glory to God. We must be in church. The blood, the precious blood of Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord, that we are washed, cleansed, forgiven of all our sins. We thank you, Lord. What we couldn't do, you did it for us, Lord God. And so we are so grateful, Lord God, for the precious blood. Oh, that liquid love, Father, that was poured on upon us, Lord God. So we thank you, Lord God. And we do this in remembrance of you. Go ahead, partake. Amen, amen. Turn around, greet someone. Let them know Jesus is alive. Get him, get him, get him. Get him out of that grave. Get him, get him, get him. Get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up. Get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up. Get up out of that grave. Sing it out. Get up, get up, get up. Get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up. Get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up. Get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up. Sing it out. He did. He picked me up. Turned me around. He placed my I can't be master, I can't be savior Because you hit my heart, you changed my name Well, for freedom, I can say I can't be master, I can't be savior I can't be master He picked me up, he turned me around Place my feet on the ground, I can't get my 
Jesus, I thank you, Savior, because you healed my heart, you changed my name, work for free, I love my sin, I thank you, Master, I thank you, Savior. an April calendar for 2024. We do have them out in the information desk out there. If you haven't already, pick one up. Pastor Linda is the one that has changed our calendars. They look great. Amen. We need change. Amen. We've got change if anyone is in Christ. He is a new creation. Heck in Corinthians 5.17. And we, she also puts puts on challenges for you. Amen? Yeah. Amen. So this Wednesday, Young Adults, 7 p.m. Then we've got Thursday for a Bible study, Mrs. Patty's group at, at, nine, at 10 a.m. I'm sorry, 10 a.m. And then on Saturday, ladies, get ready. Let's talk women's group, 9 a.m. So we're passing out, of course, our... our our list here so that you can sign up if those that did not get a chance to sign up, go ahead and sign up. We always take names so that way we know how much food we need to take and bring. I'm telling you, it's gonna be a good one. Um, we took a suggestion on there and it's gonna be on boundaries and we're gonna talk about the boundaries, okay? And then first of all, you know what? I did not say welcome. <laughs> I got so excited. But welcome, welcome to Grace Church. On behalf of the pastors, we wanna say welcome. If we have first time visitors, we wanna say welcome to Grace Church. We're so glad you're here and we welcome you, amen? Amen, amen. And then also, right after service, we're going to be having an Easter hunt. And youth, if you are willing to volunteer, we need help, the children's right now we need you right now so if you want to get up and follow pastor linda go and follow her she's going to take you down to the youth's uh, building and you're going to help with the easter hunt amen right after service as well we are going to be having um hot dogs cotton candy popcorn uh we're going to have drinks all free 
okay? And we're gonna have it on the breezeway here because of course there was rain in the morning. We don't want you to get wet. So right after service, just head out to the doors here and the side, you can go through the front and everything is free. Just go to the side and they'll give that to you as you go and enjoy your day with your family, your friends, and just have a great Easter Resurrection Day. Happy Resurrection Church. Amen? Amen. And then on, on, Monday, on Sunday next week, we do have a G1 Youth at 11 a.m. second service. And I'm going to be calling up Pastor John for tithes and offering. He is my funny husband, associate pastor here at the church. Isn't he funny sometimes? He is. <laughs> no, I'm not. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, we're going to go ahead and receive the offering. So anyone that needs an envelope, raise your hands. The ushers will hand you one. Amen. Everybody's looking at me like I'm supposed to start singing. Get up, get up, get up. Get up out of there. Great. Glory to God. Amen. Are you guys ready to have church? Amen. You could go home already and say, wow, we just had church. Amen. But you're not done yet. Amen. We got a word from our pastor. It's going to bless you. Amen. And how many of you ready to hear from our shepherd? Glory to God from Pastor, Pastor Emmanuel. How many have been gone? Uh oh. If anybody has seen a set of keys like this with a purple um, uh, ring to it, please uh, turn them in. Uh, we're, we're still looking for them. Amen? Amen. Where was I? Oh. So we have that, so we're, we're uh, uh, ready, you know, for what Pastor has for us. Also, I, I do want to let you know that, you know, there is still a, a, a building fund, but it goes to the campus in order for us to keep up everything here. Because I mean, you know, things wear and tear, and after a while you just got to fix, uh, fix it up and stuff like that. So I don't know, many of you saw they redid the, the parking lot, looks great, glory to God, and that's because of your giving. So continue giving, the money does go for where it is sent to, you know, Pastor Manuel's very good at that. So know this, that whenever you give, it goes to that, amen, and so it's a great thing, glory to God. Everybody ready to give? Everybody's got their offering. Raise it up to the Lord. Let's pray over. If you gave online, there's many ways to give, and you can do it. Amen? But let's pray. Father, we just thank you, Lord. We give you all glory and honor, Lord. We thank you that you're such a good God, Father God. And we thank you as we're here today celebrating you, Lord God. Father, we know that you raised your son, Jesus, Father, and we're so thankful, we're so grateful, Lord God, because that's why we are here today, Lord God. And Lord, we thank you, Father God, that as everyone gives, you are blessing their home, all their needs, Father. We thank you that the church is blessed, Lord God, that the gospel will always be spoken from this place, Lord God. So we thank you, and we give you all glory and honor in the mighty name of Jesus, and we all said... Amen. Amen, amen. God bless you as you give. Sally, we, are we on sale? Hey, there we go. Well, happy Resurrection Sunday, everybody. Welcome back. Welcome back, Mr. Kata. Amen, welcome back. Thank you so much for allowing me to take uh, four Sundays off. It was, it was really good. I had a blessed time, and thank you so much. For, I want to thank Pastor John and Pastor Andrew for filling in while I was, you know, uh, gone and so forth. Welcome back, Mr. Cotter. Anyway, thank you for your giving, and don't forget, yes, like she was saying afterwards, we're going to have for the free hot dogs, and you can hang out here in the youth building. There's games there to play and stuff like that, or if you have to leave, just get your hot dog, get out of here. You know, go and do I know some of you are going to go with your families and whatever. But if not, hey, it's okay. We got the youth building. We can hang out there and so forth and enjoy it. All free, okay? Excuse me, I have a lozenge. It's for, you know, I have a tickle in my throat, so. But are you ready for the Word of God? Are you excited? Happy Resurrection Sunday. I'm so glad to be back and, and uh, just want to share the Word of God with you, some things. We're not going to take too, too long. I say that. <laughs> I won't. I'll try not to go too long because I know some of you are already smelling the hot dogs. You're getting hungry. But anyway... Let's pray. We're going to get right into the Word. Heavenly Father, thank you so much 
for bringing us together as the body of Christ to hear your word this morning on Resurrection Sunday. Thank you so much, Lord God, that Jesus rose from the grave on the third day, on the third day to, to, to reveal the truth, to set us free, and that we could have eternal life. And so we're thankful for this, and I just pray that you bless this time. Lord, give me the words to speak, the exact things you want me to share. In Jesus' mighty name. So I want to talk about Jesus is risen, so we are forgiven, and we will be raptured. Now, I was listening to the last Easter, the last Easter Resurrection Sunday uh, service that I preached, and I focused a lot about the resurrection, really about the rapture. Because have you ever wondered why in the world is it the third day that Jesus rose? Why didn't he rise the next day? Why did it have to be on the third day? Again, the Bible always, God puts things in the Bible as pictures that you can't sometimes find in the surface. You have to dig into it a little bit. And so the fact that Jesus rose on the third day is significant. Why? Because, the, again, Jesus represents the body of Christ on the earth. He represents the, the 33 years that he lived. He lived a sinless life. And see, we only think about his death, burial, and resurrection, but we don't realize he had to live a holy life for 33 years and so forth, right? Why? Because he represented us. So if Jesus had sinned in growing up and everything, if he had sinned, he would not qualify as the captain of our salvation. So he had to live, not just a dying, giving his life as a sacrifice, but he had to live a holy life for 33 years. Amen? But then again, he, he was our substitute. He took our place. When Jesus died, he did it for us. That's the wonderful thing about the good news of the gospel. It's not about what I do. It's about what he did. And if I put my faith in what he did, I'll begin to do what he did. Did you get that? Anyway. You'll get it later. <laughs> so why on the third day? You know why? Because God was painting a picture. We are the body of Christ, and we will be on the earth for 2,000 years. Listen to me. We're going to be on the earth for 2,000 years, and on the third day or the morning of the third day from the time that Jesus came, we also will be changed. We will be resurrected, you could say. We, we will be raptured. Our bodies will... Why? Because we are the body. He's the head. We're the body. When did he rise up? On the third day. Nothing God does is without significance. It's all pictures. It's all types and shadows. Remember the Good Samaritan? The story of the Good Samaritan? Remember what happened in that story? Do you remember the guy got beat up? The guy that got beat up is a picture of us. We were be, ha, left half dead. We were half, half dead, we, you know, spiritually. You know what I'm saying? We're still alive. We, spiritually, we're dead, but we're still alive physically. And, and notice, what, what did the Good Samaritan say? He took him to an inn. You know what the inn represents? The church. And he, and he says, and, and uh, here's two pence. Why two? Why, why two? It's a day's wage. Two pence. And if, if, if it take, in other words, if I take longer or whatever, when I come back, I will reward you. And I'll, I'll, I'll make the difference. So, it's not without significance. Two days, we are the church, we're the end, we're supposed to take care of the body, and then after 2,000 years, Jesus will return to what? To what? Resurrect us or take us back home. Take us with us. Pick us, pick us up. Same thing. It's all, it's all pictures of Jesus coming back. And it's so vital that we understand that because... God has laid it out through all. Even Hosea says, uh, talking about the Jews, we were afflicted uh, but on, for two days, but on the third day, we're going to be raised up and live in a sight. So even the Jews in Hosea says, they're going to, God, they're, they, how many know for 2,000 years, they've been under affliction and persecuted? Why? You know why? Because why? They didn't receive their Messiah. Everything that's happened to the Jews is because of the rejection of the Messiah. But, but eventually, on the third day, or in the 3,000 from the time that Jesus came, in fact, that's why, that's why Jerusalem was taken over by Titus in AD 70. Jesus prophesied. Why? Because they, had re, they, had re, they missed their day of visitation. Listen, we're about to get another visitation. It's the return of Jesus Christ. Don't miss the day of visitation. People missed his first coming. But if you don't believe in Jesus Christ, guess what? You're going to miss his second one. You don't want to miss that one. All right? So we're going to talk about it. So when we, we're going to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, and we're going to look at this, just looking at this resurrection and the purpose of it and so forth. But notice, let's start in chapter 15, verse 1. The resurrection of Christ is so important. It's an important part of the simple gospel, which we preach. 
Why? It's part of the gospel message. Look at 1 Corinthians 15, 1. Moreover, brethren, I declare to you the gospel. Gospel means good news. Really, in, in the Greek, it kind of, it's like that word was never used before. You know why? Because it's more of a, it's so good to be, so good to be true news, almost like. Like this is so amazing, it almost sounds too good to be true. Moreover, brethren, I declare to you the good news which I preached to you, which also you received, and in which you stand. Notice, it's being preached, it's received, and guess what? You're supposed to stand on it. Listen, by which also you are what? Come on, you get saved by hearing the gospel, right? And receiving. If you hold fast that word which I preached to you, unless you believed in vain. Why would he say that? Because there's some people that might do the religious thing, and, well, I just said a prayer, but they don't really believe. They're just trying to, you know, okay, I'll just do it just so my mom will be happy. No, you have to truly believe and receive Jesus. And listen, <clears throat> how do you know that it's real, Pastor? That salvation is real in your life. I'll tell you how I know it's real. Not only because of what the Word says, but in my life, I know, <coughs> excuse me, in my life, I know that my dad, when I first got saved, he thought it was a fad. Back in 1982. He thought it was a fad. And, and so forth, that it would just, Manuel's just going through a phase, you know, because I had left the Catholic Church after I got saved and, and was, you know, crazy and filled with the Spirit, speaking in tongues and getting crazy like some of you guys up here. <laughs> and, uh, and, excuse I'm taking a lunch because i got a tickle in my throat. But, uh, but, so I did that, right? But the years started passing, and, he, and I got crazier. I still, you know, I still love God. I was getting crazier. And years passed, years passed, and I'm still great. And then finally, I went to Bible school in 90, 91, 92, and then finally he realized, man, this must be real. In other words, I know I didn't believe in vain. Why? Because the faith is still here. The faith is still here. The faith of God is in me, the, you know, and so forth. So after my second year of going to Bible school, my dad paid for my tuition because he realized this is a real thing. Manuel's serious about this. After eight years, you know, he said, this must be real in his life. And before he died, my dad says, now I realize why God brought me from Mexico over here. I see what God is doing in your lives, how God is using you guys to bless people and everything. Now I, God showed me that was my purpose for me to come here. Woo. He had an Abraham, he had an Abraham moment. Amen, amen. So, so listen, when it's real people, I don't care if you stray away from God, if you're running back and forth or whatever, the, the, the spirit of Christ is within you and he will draw you back. Or otherwise, you'll be the most miserable Christian on the planet can't fight against love right and so notice let's keep reading for I delivered to you first of all that which I also received that Christ what died for our sins according to the scriptures he died according notice he died for our sins he took our place you could not die for your sins yes you may have been born a sinner glory to God you were born a sinner but you don't stay a sinner if you believe in Jesus did you know that you were birthed into sin and somebody might say, well, if I was birthed into sin, then why does God get on me? Why is he all mad? I didn't have to be born this way, a sinner. Right? So why am I going through this and facing all this when I didn't ask for this? I was born this way. So why is God getting on me if I was born this way? Well, here's the thing. When you come to Jesus, guess what? You have to be born again. You, have, you were birthed into sin, but guess what? The way out of it is to be birthed into life, where Father God becomes your father, and the Bible, Jesus says, you must be born again. You were born, that which is born of the flesh is flesh, that which is born of the spirit is spirit. You were born once through your mama, but guess what? Now you're born again through Father God, through the spirit of God, and guess what? So the blessing, even though, yes, you were born into sin, and you get the curse and all the bondage and everything, well, guess what? When you're birthed now into life, you're born of the Spirit. Guess what? You don't earn the blessings. God doesn't bless you because you're good enough. It's by the grace of God. It's a gift. The righteousness is a gift. Just like, so you might complain, but I didn't deserve this. I didn't deserve to be born a sinner. Well, guess what? You didn't deserve to be forgiven for all your sins that you've done, all the evil. And yet, if, you, if you're birthed, if you're born again, you receive the gift of God, the eternal life, the gift of righteousness, and God doesn't count your sins against you. Here, when you were born into Adam, he counts your sins against you because you were born into Adam. Well, guess what? When you're born again, he doesn't count your sins against you anymore. Why? Because someone paid the price. Jesus did die for your sins. Amen? 
So when somebody complains, well, it's not fair because, you know, I was born this way and I didn't ask for this or whatever. Well, guess what? It's also not fair that you did all these sins or whatever and God accepts you and forgives you for all the junk, all the evil that you did. You can't compare. The blessing is greater than the curse. So it's an issue of, are you born again? You were birthed once through your mama. Now you needed to be what, birthed again, but this time out of the spirit. Amen? So, and, and, it's, and Jesus did it. So next one, look. And he also was buried. You know what that stands for? He, he took your old life and he buried it. The old you that used to love to do those evil things and he buried it. And that, why? Remember, because he, did he didn't do it for himself. He did it for you. He was our substitute. He took your place. He lived the whole, see, you could never live a holy life enough. You could never live a holy life on your own. If you did, if you did then, then who needs Jesus then? You need him because you couldn't. So listen, he was buried and that he rose. Here's what we're talking about this morning. He rose again. What day? It could have been the second day. It could have been the next day. No, he rose again when? On the third day, according to the scriptures. So we see then that it's part of the, the, the resurrection is part of the gospel message. And listen, let's, let's go to the next part here. There were many eyewitnesses of his resurrection. Look at this. Let's keep reading. And he was seen by Cephas, that's Peter. So Peter saw Jesus risen from the dead. Did you know there's so much evidence of Jesus' uh, uh, the fact that he was risen from the dead? If I had time to share all the evidence, Josh McDowell has done it. He's done archaeological evidence to show that Jesus did rise from the dead. Let me give you this one, though. Did you know that 10 years later in Nazareth, the Roman emperor put out a decree? They found an archaeology. They found a tablet that said, you are no longer allowed to remove bodies from the graves now why would they put that 10 years after Jesus you know why because of the lie that the Pharisees you know had that told told the told the, the Roman guards hey listen listen just tell them you fell asleep and then we'll give you money and that was the lie that was told that the disciples came and stole Jesus's body right but listen if you're a Roman soldier you know what the penalty is for you falling asleep on the job death so I guarantee you no Roman soldier is going to fall asleep when he knows they're going to kill me if I fall asleep. But they said, we're going to lie for you. And that was the rumor, that, the gossip that was passed around Jerusalem that the disciples came and took Jesus' body away. So 10 years later, they pass a law that, that what? You cannot remove bodies from their graves anymore. The Roman emperor did that. And I think that's an archaeology in Nazareth. They found a tablet. Why? Because of the resurrection of Jesus. They didn't want, you know, all this har harassment and stuff. To, you know, they didn't want people getting riled up because of it. So again, that shows you what something happened. There was eyewitnesses. Let's keep reading. Peter saw him. Well, who else? Then by the 12, the 12 disciples saw Jesus risen from the dead. But here's the amazing one. Next verse. After that, he was seen by over 500 brethren at once. 500. Hundred people saw him at once, of whom the greater part remain to the present, but some have fallen asleep. Fallen asleep here, this is just a type and picture. It doesn't mean they're asleep. It means they've died and they look like they're asleep, but they, they've died and gone on to be with the Lord. So notice, can you imagine here in a court of law, if you got one or two good witnesses, you can win your case. But you have over 500 people testifying that they saw Jesus risen from the dead. That's quite a bit of evidence. And Paul's saying, some of them at this time are still alive. Go ask them. They'll tell you they saw him alive. Pretty amazing, isn't it? So the evidence is there. Again, archaeology, the testimony of all these witnesses testify. And plus, you can't find, go to the tomb. Is Jesus in the tomb? He's not there. Guess what? Buddha's in the tomb. Muhammad's, Muhammad's in the tomb. Amen? Amen? It won't be old Buddha sitting on the throne. And ain't going to be Muhammad calling us home. There's an old song. An old song goes like that. <laughs> it's going it's to be the sun we're going to see, not Reverend, not Reverend Moon. Come on now. <laughs> it's the sun we're going to see, not the Reverend Moon. Come on. All of them are dead. But Jesus is the only, it's the only religion where the, the one, that, the Savior, is alive. Is alive. Amen. So let's keep reading now. So we see that. And then, as we go on, he's seen by James, then by all the apostles in verse 7. 
And then we go on, and then Paul testifies that, guess what? I also saw him risen. Look at what Paul says in verse 8. Then last of all, he was seen by me also as by one born out of due time. So Paul's saying, how many know Paul was go, riding his horse to Damascus, and, and, and he, Jesus appeared to him, knocks him out of his pinto pony, or whatever he was riding, his horse, you know, and he gets knocked down, and the Lord appears to him. Paul, Paul, why are you, what, Paul, why are you persecuting me? And he's like, what do you mean persecuting? Well, Jesus takes it personal when his body is being persecuted. Why? Because his body is him, is him and his body. We are the body of Christ in the earth. Why are you persecuting me, Paul? So he knocks him off his horse, right? And, and, and he appears to Jesus. And then in, in verse, uh, next verse, he goes on and he says, I am the least of all the apostles. Why? I'm not even worthy to be called an apostle. Why? Because I persecuted the church of God. So even Paul saying, man, I'm the last one to saw him, and I'm the least of all them. And that's why Paul preaches so much on the grace of God, because notice what he says in the next verse. Look at verse 10. But by the grace of God, it's the gospel of the goodness and the grace of God. By the grace of God, I am what I am. Well, pastor, if you preach so much on the grace of God... People aren't going to want to serve God and do God's will. Are you kidding me? Here's a, a prime example of someone who preached the gospel of the grace of God. And he says, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace toward me was what? Not in vain. In other words, it wasn't wasted. See, you can receive the grace of God and let it go to waste if you don't use it. But you can take the grace that God has given you and use it for his glory. So Paul is saying here, God's grace toward me was not in vain, yet, but I labored more, what, abundantly than they all, yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. Anybody that knows me, been around me, has worked with me or worked along with me, they know I can tire them out. Why? I work hard. I'm a hard worker. The grace of God didn't make me lazy. It made me a stronger Stronger man. It made me a, a man with purpose and so forth that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to press on. I'm not just going to, okay, let's just do something over here. Hi. <laughs> Hi, I preach wimpy grace. There's people that go around and say that grace is cheesy or, or greasy grace. Listen, it just shows me you don't understand the grace of God. If you understand the grace of God, it's the power of God. It's the, it's the, it's the empowerment of the Holy Ghost coming inside and strengthening you and quickening you and empowering you to do what he's called you to do. Everything that I am, I can say the same thing with Paul. I am what I am by the grace of God. Amen. Times when I wanted to quit, even going through storms in my life where I could have easily quit, but yet I can't. I got something on the inside that's greater on the inside telling me, don't you dare quit. Don't you dare give up. Something on the inside's working on the outside. Something on the inside working on the Get up, get up, get up. Get up, get up, get up. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. Get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. Amen. So he says, man, oh no. He says, I even worked harder than, than all of them, yet not I, though. He understood it was the grace of God, the anointing, the power of the Holy Spirit working on the inside, causing me to, to move forward and whatever. Amen. Amen. You know, if the Lord tarries, one of the things we want to do is, uh, is uh, we're all, we've got a few things we want to finish here and so forth. We want to, we want to do a, a barbecue set area in the back so that they can grill real pancakes right there in front of me, hamburgers in front of me. That way, once a month, maybe you come here and eat here instead of go to a restaurant and pay a bunch of money. And the other thing we want to do is, uh, of course, is also do a, a, a natural water, water baptism. In fact, I want to talk to you. You, you, I want to talk to you about that. I want to do a water baptismal thing that makes, makes it look with a thing so that we, anybody gets saved, they want to get baptized, we can take them over there and get them water baptized. <laughs> but here's the other thing. If the Lord tarries, we, we like to get this two acres next door to us and double the parking lot. That's why we have two services. We don't have enough parking. And then build a bigger sanctuary so that then, therefore, the youth and the others will take over this place. And though, the cafe workers are already on me. We need a bigger cafe. Well, there, they will actually get a built-in everything where they can cook. Big cafe. A space area and everything and, and everything that they need. 
and, you know, smoke is rising as, as the, the sacrifice of the burger is. Amen? Angus beef. Amen? Sirloin. <laughs> so I know they've already been telling Pastor, we need more space in the cafe. Okay, just hold on, hold on. One thing at a time, okay? <laughs> I'm going to give you some space back there first. Anyway, so if the Lord tarries, you know, God has, we're not done. We're, we want to continue. Why? Because we want, remember, when God had us start the church back in 2000, July 9th, God told me from the beginning, He said, Manuel, your, this church will be an end times church. And this is an end times church. We're gonna, I believe we are going to see the return of the Lord Jesus Christ in our lifetime. We are an end times church. It's already been 23 years. July will be uh, four, 24 years. So listen, since then, since 1982, when I gave my life to the Lord and the Lord showed me His return was near, it's been 40-something years. It has not changed. In fact, it, it's intensified in me. I believe we're even closer. All you got to do is look what's happening in the world. In just the last seven years after the last solar eclipse, things have just dramatically changed. Hey, guess we're about to enter another solar eclipse the next following Monday. I believe some major changes are coming again, even in a bigger way. But we'll talk about that in a little bit. But look at this. Let's keep reading. Where were we at? For, for if the dead do not rise... See, some people, some people, there was these Sadducees back then, and they were sad, you see, because they didn't believe in the resurrection of the dead. So they were sad, you see. Can you see that they were sad? Yes, they were sad, you see, because they didn't believe in the resurrection. Back it up again. <laughs> yeah. Huh? Oh, you skip forward? Okay, well, let's, go. Well, let's back it up then. You're, you're trying to rise us from the dead too quickly. We want to get up already. Therefore it was, whether it was I or they, so we preach and so you believed. Now notice verse 12 now. Now you can go verse 12. Now if Christ has preached that he has been raised from the dead, how do some among you say that there's no resurrection of the dead? Again, that's the Sadducees. They said that there's, there's no such thing. But the Pharisees believed in the resurrection, but the Sadducees did not believe in the resurrection. Again, that's why they're sad, you see. Now if Christ... But if there is no resurrection of the dead, then guess what? Then Christ is not risen. So listen, what is he talking about? He's talking about the rapture of the church. He's referring to the, talking about the resurrection of Christ is a symbolism referring to the resurrection or the rapture of the church. If there be no resurrection of the dead, then Christ is not risen. If the dead do not rise, then Christ did not rise. So we have a problem. Next verse. And if Christ is not risen then our preaching is empty and your faith is also empty. Now that's bad news. Why? Because you've got to understand when Jesus died on the cross, he didn't die for his sins, he died for our sins. He didn't do all that for himself, he did it for us. He represents us. He's the head, we're the body. He represents us. So if he had not come up out of that grave, then guess what? That means we don't get out of that grave either. We would still listen. It, yes, and we are found false witnesses of God because why? Because we've testified of God that he raised up Christ whom he did not raise up if the fact that the dead do not rise. If the dead don't rise, then Jesus didn't rise. And if the dead do not rise, then Christ is not risen. We got a problem. Remember, he died with our sins. And if Christ is not risen, your faith is futile and you are still in your sins. That's how important the resurrection is. Why? Because it's proof that God accepted the sacrifice of His sons on our behalf. That Jesus has fulfilled the jot and tittle of the law. We that couldn't keep the Ten Commandments, couldn't keep the law, we couldn't do it. If we could, we wouldn't need Jesus. He came because we couldn't keep the Ten Commandments. We couldn't be doers of the word. You know what I'm saying? So therefore, Jesus had to live it in our place. See, that sets you free from yourself. You couldn't do it, but he did. See what I'm saying? So he did it, but let's keep reading. Then also those who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. That means anybody who's died in the Lord, that's it. We're not going to see him. My mom... My dad, others who know the Lord, we're not going to see him again if it's true that, that the dead don't rise up and that Jesus did not rise from the dead. Then that, that's messed up. Then why are we here? Let's go, let's go and pate. Let's go get up somewhere else. 
Why? If, if, if Jesus didn't rise from the dead, we're in trouble. We're still in our sins. Why would, you know what I'm saying? Why give our tithes? Why do all this stuff? And let's just go and, and drink and be merry for tomorrow we die. But no, 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 no. Then also those who have fallen asleep have perished. And notice, if in this life we only have hope in Christ, we are of, the, of all men the most pitiable. He's saying, in other words, people, listen to me. There are more to this life than this life. What we're, what, I don't care what your problem is. I don't care what storm you're going through right now. Amen. Listen, it's temporary. What you're going through right now is temporary. It ain't going to last. Amen. It's all temporary. Focus on the future. Focus on the plan that God has for you. Because what you're going through right now, no matter how bad it may be, it is temporary. God has a future. Jesus is coming back home home to take us home soon. He says, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I'm going to come back to receive you unto myself. And the way you know, and you know the way, and remember Thomas, Thomas, I don't know the way. Jesus said, I am the way, Thomas. I am the truth. I am the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. Listen, people. Well, pastor, I believe God wants us to go through storms. I believe this is God's will for us. No pain, no gain. I don't believe in no pain, no gain. I believe in his pain, my gain. Yeah. Not row gain. <laughs> He's all right, it's all right, it's all right. Row gain. Not cocaine. <laughs> Praise God. That was, that was, a, that was a, those of you that are back in that age, you would understand. So you see what I'm saying? Because listen, I'm looking in the Bible and it tells me in the last book, in the, one of the first last chapters in the Bible, and I believe this is God's really true will for us, and it says, I'm, I've built a city for you, a, a, bit, a city that it has doesn't have worldly foundations. And he says in that city, the New Jerusalem, where Jesus said, I'm making mansions for you, it's a beautiful place. I'm, Jesus is building a mansion for you right now, and I believe he's about done, and he's about ready to show up. And listen, he says, it's a place where there will be no more pain, no more sorrow, no more tears, no more crying over you, no more of that. Why? He says, those are the former things. They're going to pass. See, that's God's will. He wants us to be happy and without pain and without sorrow. That is God's perfect will. We're not walking in the perfect will of God right now. We're going through. We're pilgrims in this earth. We're going through a journey, but this is not our final destination. So as, so as bad as it looks here and as, as all the troubles you're going through, whatever, it does not matter because God has a greater place for us. It's just temporary, man. The pain you're feeling right now is temporary. See, that's how Paul could put up with persecution, put up with being beaten up when sharing the gospel. Why? He had a heavenly perspective. He says, if you've been risen with Christ, if you've been seek those things which are above, where Christ sits at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on things on the earth. Why? Because you're dead. What do you mean I'm dead? The old you, the old you that used to love to do those things, it's dead and gone. And your life Right now in this earth is hidden with Christ in God. And when Christ appears, come on, when Jesus comes back, then you're going to appear with him in glory. Mm. Check it out though. Check it out. If you read the rest of that chapter of Colossians 3, what does it say? Therefore put off filthiness of the flesh, lust, all these things of the flesh. Put it all off. Why? Because what? You have to first become heavenly minded before you're going to be any earthly good. It's the opposite. Some people, you're so heavenly minded, Pastor, you're no earthly. No, I tell you, you're so earthly minded, you're no heavenly good. <laughs> it's the opposite. Amen? So listen, let's keep reading. But now, here's the good news, though. Christ is risen from the dead and has become the what? The first fruits of those who have fallen asleep, or in other words, those who have died and gone on. Notice, he... People, do you know why God, it's all pictures, man. It's all pictures. Even, listen, when do we go to church on? The first day of the week, Sunday. Why? If you'll do that, God blesses the rest of your week. Why do we give a tithe 
If you'll give the first of your whatever, it'll bless the rest of your finances. Come on now. It's all a picture of Jesus. Why? Because Jesus was the first to what? T to die and rise again from the dead and, and after he paid for our sins. And guess what? You're the second, the third, the fourth, the millionth, whatever is going to be raised up in the, in, in the rapture of the church. You're, you're part of that. He's the first fruits and you're the ones that are follow him. Come on. It had to happen to him first before it could happen to us. First fruits. Amen. It had to be one sacrifice forever so that we could have eternal redemption, Hebrews 9 says. And by, by one sacrifice, he has obtained eternal redemption. Eternal redemption has been obtained by him. By one sacrifice. You had nothing to do with it. Just like you had nothing to do with being born through your mama. All you have to do is just believe and you can be born from above. And enter the blessing of God. Let's keep reading. For since by man came death, how many know? See, through Adam, you had nothing to do with it. You were born through Adam into sin. By man also, what man? The second man, the second Adam, Jesus, came what? Notice, he's talking about the resurrection of the dead. That's the rapture. He's relating Jesus being risen from the dead to the rapture. What's going to happen to us? It happened to Jesus, but why? But pastor... Jesus rose on the third day. Well, guess what? The body of Christ is going to be risen after 2,000 years, after two days on the third day too. Glory to God. It's all a picture of him. Just, it's all sim symbolism, typology, and just like the Jesus risen after two days, we are going to be risen after two days or 2,000 years. First Peter says, or Second Peter says, a day with the Lord is like a 1,000 years and a 1,000 years like one day. The Bible interprets itself. Come on, people. Are you seeing that? Let's keep reading. For as an Adam, how many know? An Adam, all you died. You see, you were born into sin. You couldn't help it. That's just the way you were born. Amen. An Adam, all die. But even so in Christ, what? All shall be made alive. Somebody, whoo, glory to God. Somebody asked me, Pastor, have you ever heard anybody preach a message to Christians that are true Christians? You don't know if you're going to make it. You better make sure you got it all together. You prayed enough or whatever. You might miss the rapture. That's not what the scripture says. If you truly are a believer, all shall be made alive. All who believe in Christ will be made alive. If, if you truly are a believer, you will be raptured. If you were left behind, that means you really didn't believe. Yeah, but I came to church. Coming to church doesn't save you. You have to believe. See what I'm saying? See what I'm saying? So, so, so yeah, if you believe in Jesus as your Savior and Lord, that he died for your sins, was buried, rose again, that, that he, is, you know, he died in your place, took your place, and, and, and you, know, you have received him as your Savior, the Lord Jesus as your Savior, you will be raptured. Amen. 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 Now, if you choose to live in sin, and as a believer and whatever, and just do your own thing, whatever, you're going to be, you, you still can be raptured, but you're still going to be one of the most miserable Christians on, in the planet. Why? Because you've got the life of God on the inside of you and it's hard to live. You know it. You just can't live. You can't continue to live that way. You'll be miserable because you know what's right and you're not doing it. Let's keep reading. But each one in his own order. See, Christ is the first fruit. So Jesus had to be risen first. Afterward, those who are what? Come on, that's us. Christ at his coming. Come on now. When he comes back for the, for the rapture of the church. And listen, some people say, well, uh, there's so many other people, oh, I believe we're going to be raptured. We're going to go through the tribulation, pastor. Listen to me. Jesus is like the husband and we are the bride. It'd be like me coming to my, my spouse that I'm going to marry and saying, listen, I'm going to marry you, but wait seven years. I'm going to allow you to go through this turmoil, whatever, to purify you and make you more beautiful. No, by the time she shows up at the seven years, she's going to be like, honey, how you like my dress, honey? I got to marry her. She's ugly. Listen, that is so dumb. No, no. In fact, Isaiah, I think it's 27, we get a little glimpse. It says, enter my chambers, my people, and hide yourself 
until the wrath, ooh, there it is, it's in the Old Testament, the rapture's in the Old Testament, and people don't realize it. Enter my chambers and hide yourself until the wrath has passed. Jesus takes us away, the tribulation happens, wrath, why? Because the wrath is not only the, the bringing back the children of Israel, getting ready for the, for the physical coming of Jesus, but it's also the wrath of God on the nations that have rejected Jesus and his grace. See, there's nothing else but wrath when you reject grace. Are you seeing that? And so uh, people that say, that, oh, you're going to go through it, whatever. I'm like, are you kidding me? And not only that, if Jesus did truly, truly die for our sins and took my judgment on the cross, and then I'm now I'm going to be judged over here during the tribulation, that doesn't make sense to me. That's to tell me, that, you know what you're doing when you do that? You make the blood of Jesus have no value. I'm going to tell you something. The blood of Jesus. Oh, pastor is preaching about the blood of Jesus in church. Yes, the blood of Jesus. <laughs> the blood of Jesus is holy. The blood of Jesus is righteous. The blood of Jesus has value. The blood of Jesus was enough to pay for all your sins, past, present, and future. Listen, if you have a problem forgiving yourself, you're making yourself to be God. Because you're saying like that the blood of Jesus wasn't enough to forgive me. So if you have a problem forgiving yourself, you don't understand what Jesus did in his blood. How much, how value, how much value the blood of Jesus has. See, people, what the gospel does, it helps us to forget about ourselves. Because in ourselves, we're not good enough. In ourselves, we would never make it. It's all based on what Jesus did. So yes, it's the blood of Jesus that was the payment for your sin. It's the blood of Jesus that made you worthy. It's the blood of Jesus that made you holy. And yes, Jesus rose from the dead. And, if, and I'm going to preach on the resurrection. And if that offends you, well, you need to be offended. Because that's the gospel. Yeah, but if you tell them that, they might not like, like they, 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 shut up. <laughs> the power's in the gospel. Yeah. I said the power's in the good news. Yeah. That's where the power is. It's for me to not preach about the blood and the, and the death. And burial. It's, to, it's to what? To diminish the gospel. Right. And that's where healings will take place. Miracles will take place. When Jesus fed the 5,000, he took the bread and broke it. He was thinking about his body being broken. And then the miracle provision happened. So the miracle happens, miracles will happen in your life when you focus in his death, burial, and resurrection. All right, calm down, Pastor. Okay, I will. Next verse. Then he says, guess what? I tell you a mystery. Now, if I had time, I would share a little bit more in the rest of that chapter. I remember when my dad passed away, and, he, and they were taking him in, in you know, taking him to go bury him, and, and I saw his face, you know, he was older, and his face was all wrinkled up, and like, a, you know, like pruny and everything, you know, stuff like that, and that, and it just hit me, the revelation of, of what the Bible says, uh, Jesus said, unless a seed dies and is planted in the ground, it can't bring forth life. A seed has to die before it can be brought forth to life, and so, and so it's, a, it's, a, it's amazing that I saw my dad, and I says, oh, that's what we're doing. We're going to sow my dad's body into the earth like a seed. But what's going to happen? What happens to a seed when you plant it? It gets planted in the ground, and then guess what? Moisture comes and touches the seed. Boom! It wakes it up. <laughs> Same way. What's going to happen in the rapture is this, my dad's body is a seed planted in the earth. The moisture, or the, which is water of the Holy Spirit, is going to come and touch him. Ooh. And then he will be changed. He will, his body will be changed. He will receive his, his glorified body. When he comes with Jesus, he, his spirit will, will be, enter into his glorified body. And he'll be changed. So will your loved one in the Lord. Amen. So Paul says, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all, in other words, not all of us are going to die before Jesus comes. But we shall all be what? I said, we're all, there's, listen, Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He that, he that, um, dies will live again but he that lives and does not die you know he, in other words guess we really don't taste death anymore as a believer we don't taste death right now even if we die before jesus comes it's just like a twinkling in an eye you're here one moment then the other moment you're in the presence of god so we really don't taste death amen let's keep reading now 
In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised incorruptible, just like my dad, and we shall be, notice all of us, us that are alive will be changed too. Those that are dead, they'll be changed, but guess us, us that are alive, even though we have our spirit already in us, but our bodies will be changed. Now listen, for this corruptible, just like my dad's body, must put on incorruption. It was, my dad's body was sown in weakness, Corinthians says, but it will be, what, raised in power. Amen? It was sown a corruptible body, but it will be raised an incorruptible body. It was sown weak, but it will be raised in glory. For this corruptible must put on corruption, and this mortal must put on in immortality. So when this corruptible is put on in corruption, and this mortal is put on immortality, then, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death, that's the last enemy. That's going to be defeated. Death is swallowed up in victory. Come on now. Oh, death, where is your sting? See, as a Christian, death doesn't sting us anymore because we know where we go. Amen? Oh, death, where is your sting? Oh, hates, where is your victory? The sting of death is sin. The sting of death is sin. And But listen, the strength of sin is what? Do you know why I don't preach the law? Because if I preached the law, I would strengthen you to sin. If I was up here preaching the Ten Commandments, like some people think you should still preach, I would actually strengthen you to sin. Why? Because you'd be thinking, okay, I shall not lie, thou shalt not lie, thou shalt not lie. And there you go home and you're lying. And then you feel condemned because you're lying. Listen, if we could keep the Ten Commandments, if we could have kept the law, and listen, there's more than just the Ten Commandments. Did you know the law has 635 laws? And, the, and James says, if you fall short on one of them, it's like you broke all of them. Pastor, that sounds hopeless. That's right. That's right. In fact, Paul says in Galatians, if there was a law given that could brought eternal life, then righteousness would have been through the law. But there was no way. Why? Not that the law is not good and holy and right and just. We're the problem. Our flesh like Pastor John was battling the flesh. Our flesh is a problem. We can't do it. We couldn't do it. So therefore, God had to send His Son to do it for us, to do it in our place. So you see, that's why the message is about the gospel of the grace of God. Amen? Listen to me, people. Do you, know what, do you want to know how real change happens? Listen to me. You want to know how real change happens? It happens when you know somebody accepts you just the way you are. It's when you, in other words, when real change happens in your life is when you know God, the Bible says you're accepted in the beloved. Ephesians 1. We are accepted in the dearly loved one. God accepts you where you're at. Now does that mean he wants you to stay where you're at in the outside? No. No. But, but, he, but when you know that he loves you no matter how many times you mess up, no matter how many times you fail, you just get back up and you keep loving him and serving him and just doing his will. When you understand that he accepts you where you're at, that's, I'm not, I don't know about you, but in my life, even just recently, I made a decision on some things. You know how the change happened in my life? When God allowed me to do what I thought I couldn't do. And then, you know what happened? I changed. And I says, you know what, Father? I know you're allowing me to do this, but I don't want to do it anymore. Notice what I said. I don't want to do it. I know you accept me the way I am, but I want to do better. Are you seeing? It's out of love because he accepts me where I'm at. All of a sudden, the change came, and guess what? And then the anointing came for me. For me. Like Paul says, I have commit, he is able to commit what I have committed to him against that day. And so I committed this thing to God, and now he's helping me and gracing me. Oh, and it feels so free. I want to get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. Amen. That doesn't mean I don't have issues. I don't have days and things that are going on or whatever. But again, change comes when, when you accept somebody where there's at. You can't love somebody you don't accept. It's hard to love someone you don't accept. Come on. Now, that doesn't mean you agree with what they're doing. But you accept where they're at. Amen. 
But as a, a God's love comes in and starts changing you, changing them as you focus on, on what Jesus did for you and all he's doing for you, it'll begin to what? It'll begin to change your life. As you focus on God's love for you, not law, love is what will motivate you to want to change. Because why? I've said it before, both Pastor Lucy and I, we would always say the same thing. You all do what you want to do. You end up doing what you want to do. So, I'm preaching the Word so that the Word of God will change your want to. Then it comes out of your heart. And then true change begins to happen. Because why? You're allowing God to move through you. And you want to change. I want to be a better husband. I want to be a better son or daughter. I, see what I'm saying? I want, see what I'm saying? It comes out of your heart. Not because you have to. Come on. Let's wrap, start wrapping this up. But thanks be to God though. Come on now. Who gives us the what? Victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. He gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, sistren, whatever you're in, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. See, so see, yes, we're to do good works. We are to do good works. But good works are because of what he's done for us. Good works are, are spirit-led activity. Dead works are the religious things people do to find acceptance with God. That's a dead work. Hebrews talks about that. Dead works. We're, we don't do, dead works are the religious things people do to find acceptance with God. A good work, it's something you do that comes out of love for God, out of, out of the resources. In other words, you do good works because you're saved, not because you're trying to get saved. The motive is different. Spirit-led activity. Some people talk, when I talk about grace, they think you, you just do nothing. No, no, it's spirit-led activity. People can be real busy doing all kinds of stuff, but is that what God wants you to do? Come on. It's spirit-led activity, amen? And so we see that, amen? Are you seeing that? Now, the resurrection is real. Jesus did rise from the dead. Hallelujah. Heads bowed, eyes closed. I want to pray. If, if there's anyone watching, either online or you here, you've never made Jesus your Savior. You, come on. Don't, don't be like that, don't, like it says, they, unless you believe in vain. No. You need to know. In fact, jo even John said, he said, I've written these things so that you may know that you have eternal life. Those of you who believe in this name, that you may know that you have eternal life. Yeah, you can come up right now. Yeah. Yeah. I've written these things for that purpose. So, if that's you, and you've never made Jesus your Savior, what a wonderful, great time to receive Him on Resurrection Sunday. You'll never forget the day you were born again. Remember, you were birthed once through Adam, but you need to be born again through the Spirit by receiving Jesus as your Savior. And just like, just like you know, your sins were counted against you when you were born, guess what? When you come into Christ, God will no longer count your sins against you. Past, present, and future. Amen. So if that's you or if you're watching me online, where you're at sitting, if you're sitting on the couch, sofa, table, whatever, I want to lead you in a simple prayer to receive Jesus, if that's you. Anybody in here, raise your hand. I mean, I'm not going to call you up, but I just want to know for sure if there's anyone in this side that you'd like to receive Jesus you've never have. Or if you have, but you just, you know what I'm saying, you're not sure. You're not sure in yourself. Maybe you just did it because somebody asked you. Okay, I'll just pray real quick just to get him off my hair. But you want to know that you know that you know that you're born again, that you're saved. That's you. Raise your hand, and I will pray with you. Amen. God bless you. God bless you guys. Father, I want everybody to pray along with me. And those that, if you're watching and you've never received Jesus, I want you to say this. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word. I believe I have sinned and come short of your glory. But I heard the good news that Jesus died for my sins, that he was buried, and that he rose again on the third day, according to the scriptures. Lord Jesus, I confess that you are Lord, the Messiah, that you died for me. I receive you now as my Lord and my Savior. Come into my life change me recreate me give me a new spirit 
I put my trust in you. I can't save myself, but I receive your forgiveness right now in your name, Jesus. And from this day forward, I will serve you and follow you, not in my own ability or strength, but by your grace. In your name, Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Thank you. Please let us know. And if you're watching too, let us know. Amen. Now listen, just give me a, just a few more minutes. I'm not going to take too long. Remember I told you, we're an, we're an, uh, I believe we're an end time church that Jesus is coming soon. I want to just share it because you already heard there's a, there's a, uh, uh, can you put that thing up? There's an October, I mean, there's an eclipse coming here in April 8th, the following Monday. And I'm not saying this, th this is not me saying this, okay? This is uh, actually a Jewish ministry in, in Israel that is saying what they're saying. A Jewish ministry in Israel, and, uh, uh, but they, they believe in the Messiah. And so they put out stuff like this because they believe the Messiah is coming. Listen, even the Jews know that the Messiah is coming back soon. Did you know that there was a rabbi? I don't know if you heard this, a real well-known rabbi that had died. And he says the Lord revealed to him who the Messiah was. But he told the people that followed him, he put it in a letter. And he told the people that followed him, don't open it up until I'm gone. And guess what? they opened it up and he said the Lord showed him that Jesus Christ is the Messiah and he's, this is a guy that's ministering to Jews so Jews are getting they know something is up that's why they have the red heifer they're about to coming up they're supposed to take one of the heifers to sanctify the te coming temple and everything see they're preparing they know the Messiah can't come without a third temple so listen solar eclipse of biblical proportions will transverse the continental United States let's just read a couple of it if you want to move it up on April 8th, a total solar eclipse will transverse the continental U.S., passing through the southwest California border with Mexico and crossing to the northwestern United States. While skeptics claim that this astronomical phenomenon has no spiritual significance, others note that the last eclipse that transversed the United States ushered a catastrophic hurricane season. How many know what else happened? The global COVID epidemic. What else? The war in Ukraine and, of course, the horrific Hamas attack on Israel. Such a series of events has led many to take note of the upcoming eclipse, which takes place on the day, first day of Nisan, the, the first month of the biblical calendar, and also makes the beginning of the redemption from Egypt. The total eclipse will pass over Mexico. Amen. If it passes over Mexico, something's got to happen. Amen. amen. And from the Pacific Ocean at around 11.07 a.m. and continue over to the United States, starting in the southwest and moving northeast until it passes over the shores of northeast U.S. in northern Vermont, New Hampshire and Maine. The eclipse will exit the North American continent uh, up through Canada. Let's go on, move it up. A solar eclipse occurs when the moon passes between the Earth and the sun, thereby obscuring the image of the sun for a viewer on Earth. A total solar eclipse occurs when the moon's apparent diameter, as seen from the Earth, is larger than the sun's, blocking all direct sunlight and turning day into darkness. As it happens, the moon will make the month's uh, closest approach to Earth just 223,000 miles one day before the total solar eclipse, therefore appearing its largest on the day of the partial solar eclipse visible over a surrounding region thousands of miles wide. Let's move it up. It will be, oh, back down a little bit. It will be the first solar eclipse visible in the continent since 2017, and the only total solar eclipse in the 21st century when the totality will be visible in Mexico, the United States, and Canada. It will also be vi the last total solar eclipse visible in the continuous United States for the next two decades, until August 2024. Uh, whereas the path of the 27 eclipse crossed from the Pacific Northwest, it went like this, to Southern Florida, the upcoming solar eclipse will travel this way, beginning the continent from the Southwest of the US and in, in the Northeast. The paths of the two eclipses form a transcontinental X. In a strange coincidence, the only spot in the path of both eclipses receiving a double dose of this modern plague of darkness. And the point of the longest duration for both eclipses is a particular part of southern Illinois known appropriately enough as Little Egypt. 
the Egyptian connection is so strong that there are several cities in the area named for ancient places like Karniak, uh, Karnak, Cairo, and Thebes. The 2017 eclipse was also known as the Seven Salem Eclipse because the path of that eclipse crossed over seven U.S. locations named Salem. Let's go on, move it up a little bit. It came through what? Salem, Oregon, Salem, Idaho, Salem, Wyoming, Salem, Nebraska, Salem, Nebra uh, Missouri, Salem, Kentucky, and Salem, South Carolina. That's Salem, South Carolina. Now, Salem was the biblical name for Jerusalem before King David made it his capital. Abraham visited Melchizedek, the king of Salem, Genesis 14. The name Melchizedek means my king is righteousness, hence at a belief in the God of Israel. The path, though, listen, of the upcoming solar eclipse <laughs> goes over uh, seven U.S. locations named Nineveh. Nineveh, Texas, Nineveh, Missouri, Nineveh, Indiana, Nineveh, Ohio, Nineveh, Pennsylvania, Nineveh, Virginia, Nineveh, New York. The eclipse will also cross over a location named Nineveh in the province of Nova Scotia in Canada. It is interesting to note that a solar eclipse known as a birthday eclipse took place in the 15th of June, 763 BC, passing over the Assyrian capital of what? Nineveh in the middle reign of Jeroboam II, who ruled Israel from 786 to 746. According to 2 Kings 14.25, the prophet who? Jonah lived and prophesied in Jeroboam's reign. The biblical scholar Donald Wiseman has speculated that the eclipse took place when? When Jonah arrived in Nineveh <laughs> and urged the people to repent. So Jonah shows up, there's an eclipse, and Jonah shows up being but flushed out of a whale. And the Ninevites worship a, a, a fish god. And there's this guy that comes out of a whale. So you can see why they're repentant. <laughs> well, guess what? A solar eclipse happened also when Jesus died on the cross. From what? 12 o'clock to 3 o'clock, there was darkness throughout the land. A sign that something major was happening. What else happened? An earthquake. Do you remember the Brownsville Revival? That pastor there prophesied years ago that a major earthquake is going to happen possibly to the United States of America in the Madrid fault line that happens to be basically where these two eclipses cross. He said it's a future event that, that he saw the Lord show him what would happen in the Brownsville Revival. Now, listen. So, he connects this time to Nineveh and, and it goes on. I wish I had time. Guess what? You know one of the other towns that is in this line? It's called Rapture. Again, you might say, I, I don't want to share any more. You can read the article if you want to study it for yourself. Again, what's the point? Is it coincidence? Or is it, again, remember Genesis says the sun and the moon are for signs and seasons. Sign. How many know you see a sign? Phoenix, 20 miles away. It lets you know we're getting close. So guess what? A sign before Jesus, and Jesus when he died, there was an eclipse, there was an earthquake and whatever. A sign possibly we could see, I'm not saying it's gonna happen right away after the eclipse, but something could happen, some believe within six months. And there's some believe that this fall of 24 could be this, a major sign, whether it's the rapture. Could it be, Pastor? Did you know that the world is saying that the world's gonna change, new world order starts in 2030? And that it starts new in 31. Count from 31 back to 2024, that's seven years. Am I saying that the rapture is going to happen in 2024? I'm not, but I am saying that we are in the season. It could. It could. This, why are these signs happening? Why, again, God said that the moon, the stars would be for signs. And Jesus even told him, you guys can interpret the weather and the sky, and you're not able to interpret the sign. And here's Jesus said, here's a sign I'm going to give you. The sign of the prophet Jonah. What's the sign of the prophet Jonah? Jonah was in the whale two days and nights. And on the third day, Jesus was in the earth two days and nights. The church has been in the world two days, 2,000 years, and it's about to get raptured. <clears throat> so, but here's, I do want to say this, even though I don't believe we're going through the tribulation, isn't it something that this last eclipse happened seven years prior? And now seven years we're having this one? 
And did you know that there was another eclipse in 23? And so you see an X going like this, and then you see another one, the 23 one. They didn't mention it very long, but when you see it in, in Hebrew, it, it's the Aleph and the Tef. When you put the three paths of the, uh, it, it, it's the picture of Aleph and Tef, Alpha and Omega. Jesus is the beginning and the end. Isaiah says, God always will tell the end from the beginning. Are we seeing the end? Possibly from the beginning, God has been telling us and we're getting there. Now, now listen, God can do whatever he wants. He can tarry and say, no, we're going to go further, whatever. But we, we, nobody knows the day or the hour. Let me make that very clear. Pastor Emmanuel isn't saying the day or the hour when the rapture will occur. But what I am saying, we're definitely entering the season. Whether it's this year, the next year, whatever, we are in the season. Why? The New World Order, they say it's going to, they say that AI and everything will take off by 2030. I'm not saying this. This is what the secularists are saying. So, I will say this. Remember in 2014, I warned everybody, put things aside, because if a major earthquake happens, just like this bridge collapse, I'm, that's nothing compared to if a major earthquake and things from the Mississippi on are broken up, or in the Northwest, if it happens, there might be times where you don't have enough food. People are going to run to the store, buy everything. And so I want you to have some things set aside in case something happens so that you're prepared. Pastor, I don't believe that. Well, didn't, didn't God warn, warn Joseph to save up for seven years? Why? Because seven-year famine is coming. So God will warn people, the prophets and the men of God, to warn the body, get ready. So I'm warning you. Get ready. I don't want everybody coming to my house cause, just because I saved some stuff. I don't have enough. Here, a bottle for you, a bottle for you. It may last a week for you, okay? No, I'm going to take care of my family first. And you, which you should do the same thing. Listen, I'm not talking about hoarding. I'm just saying some basic stuff that you could last a few months in case something major happens. Listen, people in the south in Florida, they do it all the time because of hurricanes or tornadoes in the Middle East. So that's all I'm asking. Keep some stuff, canned goods, stuff like that. And for you Hispanics, big bag of rice and a big bag of beans. You'll survive anything. Make sure you have flour though for the tortillas. Beans and rice in Jesus Christ and you will survive. So listen, listen, I feel it's important enough that God is leading me to share this with you. So whether he does come this year or not, there's some things that are up ahead. So be ready, prepare yourself, amen, and get ready. Get ready. Words. If there's ever a time to get involved in church, it's now. If there's ever, a, if you ever, I, I think I want to start serving, it's now. If you ever thought that, man, I want, to, I want to learn more and grow in the things of God, it's now. Now's the time, amen? Oh, man, it's exciting, though. We're about to get up, get up, get up, get up out of here. Get up, get up, get up, get up out of here. Come on now. Amen? Well, don't look at me all sad now just because of... Yeah, but if Jesus comes next week, I wanted to get married and have kids and whatever. Listen, when you're in heaven, you're going to say, man, I'm glad I didn't go through all that pain and all that stuff. I want to see my grandkids get up and have children. I want to have grand... Shut up. When you see heaven, you're like, I'm glad my grandkids aren't suffering. Do you want... Personally, I don't want my grandson to go through what he's going through right now in school and learning all the junk and all the transgender garbage and all the stuff that's happening in the world. This, is, this world's getting sick. I said, this world's getting sick. I'd rather have my kids be in heaven. So don't think like, yeah, but I'm going to miss out. You're going to miss on nothing. You're missing nothing. You're going to be a place where there's no more pain, no more sorrow, no more crying. You get to eat in your glorified body and not get fat anymore. Everybody should say amen to that one, right? Amen? No more fatness. Amen? No more people calling me Gordy Cakes. No more people call me, you know, Pillsbury Doughboy. <laughs> Fluffy. Not stuffy. <laughs> okay, we got to get out of here. Listen, I'm going to pray over the food. 
uh, it's all free. Go in here, and you can hang out here because we got the youth building open. There's tables and chairs there. Hang out, fellowship, and whatever. If you have to go, get your hot dog, get us all, and and leave. Get out of here. All right, just get out. Go to your family. Okay, let me take over. Okay, <laughs> go ahead. Pray over the food. God bless you guys watching. Yes.